So it's always useful to look at media trends from uh, other countries and particularly on our own continent. Nigeria, as we know, boasts a massive population, something in the region of 190 million people, 97 million of which are active internet users. Lisa Steingold is with us, marketing manager at Popeye Media, taking a recent trip to the country as part of her company's Ad Tech Academy, and is here to report back on some interesting stats and trends. Welcome, and uh, welcome back from Nigeria. Thank 190 you, million people, uh, and uh, something in the region, I think, 97 million active internet users. I mean, the penetration there is phenomenally high, isn't it? It is phenomenal. Everyone talks about mobile, but in that country, it really is mobile first. What about Facebook? What, what's, what's the use of Facebook like? And perhaps more importantly, where's the commercial application as far as Facebook has been phenomenal mm. for brands within mm. the country because of the mobile penetration. Brands are using it to leverage business results. It's strange considering the kinds of brands mm. who are advertising on Facebook. Everything from Guinness to Johnny Walker, um, banks, shop right mm. checkers. So, Lisa, the obvious question is, question is, is there a sense then of lost opportunity in South Africa when it comes to the power and efficacy of Facebook? There isn't a sense of lost opportunity. However, I don't think brands are leveraging the full space mm. of what they can do in terms of a business context. I do believe a lot of South African marketers do not understand the full power with results to brand and business growth. And just all the opportunities that Facebook have in terms of ad types and ad units that speak directly to their particular vertical. Mm. It's not only penetration which is important. It's also no. time spent on mobile. Correct. Uh, you make the point that it's 193 minutes every day. I'm not sure how that compares to, uh, to South Africans, but a whole lot more than even television. Again, illustrating the power of that second screen in your hand. Correct. Mm. And... Um, if I may just correct you, uh, it's no longer second screen. Mm. It is first screen, in fact. Duly admonished, Jamie <laughs> Max. But that's interesting because apologize. typically it's known as the second screen. It, so that has now become the principal method of, of engagement. It is known mm. as second screen. And mm. to the point where television advertisers are leveraging that mm. space, where if an ad is flighted on TV, it's also flighted at the same time on mobile, mm. on Facebook and Instagram, because they know that that's first screen. So what's the lesson here, Lisa, for South African marketers? South African marketers, in terms of Nigeria, if you think that you're going to go to that market and do business without having done a proper cultural investigation, mm. to raise a point, uh, someone was telling us a story of he went shopping in mm. Lagos uh, and wanted some typical mm. dustbin bags mm. and he went to ShopRite checkers mm. and he couldn't find what he needed because it had come the product had come from South Africa and the dimensions weren't right for Nigeria they don't measure mm. dustbins in the same way and I just thought that that was such a prime example of South African mm. marketers I do sometimes think think that mm. it's one Africa. So we where cannot go isn't. in with this prescriptive arrogance. It's no. a question of researching that market. It a is a better. fundamentally mm. different market. It certainly is eye-opening from Popeye Media. Lisa Steingold, thank you very much. As the revamp of the Johannesburg inner city continues apace, more and more businesses are heading to the CBD. Top research company Ornico is following suit, and as the chief executive officer tells Yashni Padiachi, it's a move almost a decade in the making. Joburg City Centre has often had a bad rap.